is capable of causing irreparable harm. The court recalls that on May 7, 2024, Israel began a military offensive in Rafah following weeks of intensified bombardment, and that as a result, approximately 800,000 Palestinians were displaced from Rafah as at May 18, 2024. The court notes that senior United Nations officials have consistently underscored the immense risks associated with the military offensive in Rafah. For instance, on May 3, 2024, the spokesperson of the Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs warned that an assault on Rafah would put, I quote, hundreds of thousands of people at imminent risk of death, end of quote, and would severely impact the humanitarian operation in the entire Gaza Strip, which is run primarily out of Rafah. On May 6, 2024, the United Nations Children's Fund indicated that about half of the approximately 1.2 million Palestinians sheltering in Rafah were children and warned that military operations therein would result in, I quote, the few remaining basic services and infrastructure they need to survive being totally destroyed, end of quote. The United Nations sources indicate that the aforementioned risks have started to materialize and will intensify even further if the operation continues. For instance, on May 8, 2024, the Director General of the World Health Organization stated the Al Najjar Hospital, one of the last remaining medical facilities in the Rafah Governorate, was no longer functional due to the ongoing hostilities in its vicinity. On May 17, 2024, the World Food Programme warned that it had been able to access its warehouses in Rafah for over, it hadn't been able to access its warehouses in Rafah for over a week and observed that, I quote, the incursion into Rafah is a significant setback to recent modest, modest progress on access. End of quote. On the basis of information before it, the court is not convinced that the evacuation efforts and related measures that Israel affirms to have undertaken to enhance the security of civilians in the Gaza Strip, and in particular those recently displaced from the Rafah governorate, are sufficient to alleviate the immense risk to which the Palestinian population is exposed as a result of the military offensive in Rafah. The court observed, for instance, that according to a statement by the Commissioner General of the United Nations Relief and Works Agency for Palestine Refugees in the Near East, Mr. Philippe Lazzarini, on May 18, 2024, I quote, the areas that peoples are fleeing to now do not have safe water supplies, or sanitation facilities. Al Mawasi, as one example, is a sandy 14 square kilometer agricultural land where people are left out in the open with little to no buildings or roads. It lacks the minimal conditions to provide emergency humanitarian assistance in a safe and dignified manner." End of quote. The court observed that Israel has not provided sufficient information concerning the safety of the population during the evacuation process or the availability in Al Mawasi area of the necessary amount of water, sanitation, food, medicine, and shelter for the 800,000 Palestinians that have evacuated thus far. Consequently, the court is of the view that Israel has not sufficiently addressed and dispelled the concerns raised by its military offensive in Rafah. 
in light of the considerations set out in the preceding sections of the order, and taking account of the provisional measures indicated in its orders of January 26, 2024, and March 28, 2024, the Court finds that the current situation arising from Israel's military offensive in Rafah entails a further risk of irreparable prejudice to the plausible rights claimed by South Africa, and that there is urgency in the sense that there exists a real and imminent risk that such prejudice will be caused before the Court gives its final decision. The Court concludes, on the basis of the aforementioned considerations, that the circumstances of the case require to modify its decision set out in its order of March 28, 2024. The Court recalls that in accordance with Article 75, Paragraph 2 of its rules, when a request for the indication of provisional measures has been made, it has the power under its statute to indicate measures that are not in whole or in part other than those requested. In the present case, having considered the terms of the provisional measures requested by South Africa and the circumstances of the case, the Court found that the measures to be indicated need not be identical to those requested. The Court considers that, in conformity with the obligations under the Genocide Convention, Israel must immediately halt its military offensive and any other action in the Rafah governorate which may inflict on the Palestinian group in Gaza conditions of life that could bring about its physical destruction in whole or in part. The Court recalls that, it is, that in its order of January 26, 2024, it ordered Israel inter area to, I quote, take effective measures to prevent the destruction and ensure the preservation of evidence related to allegations of acts within the scope of Article 2 and Article 3 of the Genocide Convention, end of quote. In the present circumstances, <clears throat> The Court is also of the view that, in order to preserve evidence related to allegations of acts falling within the scope of Article 2 and Article 3 of the Genocide Convention, Israel must take effective measures to ensure the unimpeded access to the Gaza Strip of any commission of inquiry, fact-finding mission, or other investigative body mandated by competent organs of the United Nations to investigate allegations of genocide. The Court also considers that the catastrophic situation in Gaza confirmed the need for the immediate and effective implementation of the measures indicated in its orders of January 26, 2024 and March 28, 2024 which are applicable throughout the Gaza Strip, including in Rafah. In these circumstances, the Court finds it necessary to reaffirm the measures indicated in those orders. In so doing, the Court wishes to emphasize that the measure indicated in paragraph 51.2a of its order of March 28, 2024, requiring, I quote, the unhindered provision at scale by all concerned of urgently needed basic services and humanitarian assistance, end of quote, necessitates that the respondent maintain open land crossing points, and in particular, the Rafah crossing. In view of the specific provisional measures it has decided to indicate, the court considered that Israel must submit a report to the court on all measures taken to give effect to this order within one month from the date of this order. The report so provided will then be communicated to South Africa, which shall be given the opportunity to submit to the court its comments thereon. The court recalls that its orders on provisional measures under Article 41 of the statute have binding effect and thus create international legal obligations 
for any party to whom the provisional measures are addressed. The Court underlined that the present order is without prejudice to any findings concerning the respondent's compliance with the orders of January 26, 2024 and March 28, 2024. In its orders of January 26, 2024 and March 28, 2024, the Court expressed its grave concern over the fate of the hostages abducted during the attacks in Israel on October 7, 2023, and held since then by Hamas and other armed groups and called for their immediate and unconditional release. The Court finds it deeply troubling that many of these hostages remain in captivity and reiterates its call for their immediate and unconditional release. I shall now read out the operative part of the order. For these reasons, the Court, by 13 votes to 2, reaffirms the provisional measures indicated in its orders of 26 January 2024 and March 28, 2024, which should be immediately and effectively implemented. In favour, President Salam, Judges Abraham, Yusuf, Shwe, Bandari, Iwasawa, Nolte, Chardsworth, Brandt, Gomez Robledo, Cleveland, Oresco, Tladi. Against Vice President Subutinde, Judge Adok Barak. Two indicates the following provisional measures. The States of Israel shall, in conformity with its obligation under the Convention on the Preve Prevention and Punishment of the Crime of Genocide, and in view of the worsening conditions of life faced by civilians in the Rafah Governorate, A, by 13 votes to 2, immediately hold its military offensive and any other action in the Rafah Governorate which may inflict on the Palestinian group in Gaza conditions of life that would bring about its physical destruction in whole or in part. In favor, President Salam, Judges Abraham, Yusuf, Shwe, Bandari, Iwazawa, Nolte, Charlesworth, Brandt, Gomez Robledo, Cleveland, Oresco, Tladi. Against Vice President Sebutinde, Judge Adhok Barak. By 13 votes to two, maintain open the Rafah crossing for unhindered provision at scale of urgently needed basic services and humanitarian assistance. In favor, President Salam, Judges Abraham, Yusuf, Shwe, Bandari, Iwasawa, Nolte, Chartsworth, Brandt, Gomez Robledo, Cleveland, Uresco, Tladi. Against Vice President Sibeltinde, Judge Ad hoc Barak. C. By 13 votes to 2, take effective measures to ensure the unimpeded access to the Gaza Strip of any Commission of Inquiry, fact-finding mission, or other investigative body mandated by competent organs of the United Nations to investigate allegations of genocide. In favor, President Salam, Judges Abraham, Yusuf, Shwe, Bandari, Iwasawa, Nolte, Chargeworth, Brandt, Gomez Robledo, Cleveland, Oresco, Tladi. Against Vice President Sebutinde, Judge Adok Barak. Three, by 13 votes to two, decides that the State of Israel shall submit a report to the court on all measures taken to give effect to this order within one month as from the date of this order. In favor, President Salam, Judges Abraham, Yusuf, Shwe, Bandari, 
Iwasawa, Nolte, Charlesworth, Brand, Gomez Robledo, Cleveland, Uresco, Tladi. Against Vice President Sebutinde, Judge Ad hoc Barak. I shall now call on the registrar to read the operative part of the order in French. Par ces motifs, la Cour, 1, par 13 voix contre 2, réaffirme les mesures conservatoires indiquées dans ses ordonnances des 26 janvier et 28 mars 2024 qui doivent être immédiatement et effectivement mises en œuvre. Pour M. Salam, Président, M. Abraham Youssouf, Mme Choué, M. Bandari Iwasawa Nolt, Mme Charles Ward, M. Bran Gomez Robledo, Mme Cleveland, M. Orescu Tladi, juge. Contre Mme Seboutinde, vice-présidente, M. Barak, juge ad hoc. 2. Indique les mesures conservatoires suivantes. L'État d'Israël doit, conformément aux obligations lui incombant au titre de la Convention pour la, la prévention et la répression du crime de génocide et au vu de la dégradation des conditions d'existence auxquelles sont soumis les civils dans le gouvernorat de Rafa, a, par 13 voix contre 2, arrêté immédiatement son offensive militaire et toute autre action menée dans le gouvernorat de Rafa qui serait susceptible de soumettre le groupe des Palestiniens de Gaza à des conditions d'existence capables d'entraîner sa destruction physique totale ou partielle. Pour M. Salam Président, M. Abraham Youssouf, Mme Choué, M. Bandari Iwasawa Nolt, Mme Charles Ward, M. Brandt Gomez Robledo, Mme Cleveland, M. Orescu Tladi, juge, contre Mme Seboutinde, vice-présidente, M. Barak, juge ad hoc. B. Par 13 voix contre 2. Maintenir ouvert le point de passage de Rafa pour que puisse être assurée, sans restriction et à grande échelle, la fourniture des services de base et de l'aide humanitaire requis de toute urgence. Pour M. Salam, président, M. Abraham, Youssouf, Mme Choué, M. Bandari, Iwasawa, Nolt, Mme Charlesworth, M. Bran, Gomez, Robledo, Mme Cleveland, M. Orescu, Tladi, juge, contre Mme Seboutinde, vice-présidente, M. Barak, juge ad hoc. C. Par 13 voix contre 2. Prendre des mesures permettant effectivement de garantir l'accès sans entrave à la bande de Gaza, à toute commission d'enquête, toute mission d'établissement des faits ou tout autre organisme chargé par les organes compétents de l'Organisation des Nations Unies d'enquêter sur des allégations de génocide. Pour M. Salam, président, M. Abraham, Youssouf, Mme Choué, M. Bandari, Iwasawa, Nolte, Mme Charlesworth, M. Bran, Gomez Robledo, Mme Cleveland, M. Orescu, Tladi, juge, contre Mme Seboutinde, vice-présidente, M. Barak, juge ad hoc. 3. Par 13 voix contre 2, décide que l'État d'Israël devra, dans un délai d'un mois à compter de la date de la présente ordonnance, soumettre à la Cour un rapport sur l'ensemble des mesures qu'il aura prises pour donner effet à cette ordonnance. Pour M. Salam, Président, M. Abraham, Youssouf, Mme Choué, M. Bandari, Iwasawa, Nolt, Mme Charlesworth, M. Bran, Gomez Robledo, Mme Cleveland, M. Orescu, Tladi, juge, contre Mme Seboutinde, vice-présidente, M. Barak, juge ad hoc. Vice-président Seboutinde, appends a descending opinion to the order of the court. Judges Nolte, Urescu and Tladi append declaration to the order of the court. Judge Adok Barak appends a descending opinion to the order of the court. The text of the order is available from today in TypeScript. It will be available shortly on the court's website. The printed text will be available in due course. As the court has no further business before it today, I declare the sitting closed.